What's up, guys? It's Justin Kahn, and this is Fractal Radio, and we're doing a special episode today uh, with David and Ludovic from the Fractal team, uh, who brought to life the Fractal NFT, so that collection of 100,000 special snowflakes floating out there in the metaverse that everyone is super excited about. Uh, we wanted to do a deep dive behind the scenes to tell some of the stories of like how we uh, came up with the Fractal NFT, how it originated, uh, what it's going to look like in the future. And so um, thanks for joining today. All right. Uh, David Ludovic, thanks for taking time out of the busy day to do this. How are you guys doing? Justin, good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm excellent now. I'm excellent now. So talking about some uh, fractals. Yeah, talking about fractals, chopping it up. All right. So like, let's introduce everybody to the two of you. Um, Dave, you go first. You're my co-founder on Fractal. We've known each other for a long time since the early days of Y Combinator. Give us the quick, uh, you know, background. Yeah, yeah. Justin and I go way back to like o five o six Y Combinator days, and um, you know, we've stayed in touch over the years. And then maybe just a few months ago, we started talking about crypto, and we were both really interested in the Solana ecosystem, and um, and ended up co-founding Fractal together, uh, super excited. And uh, well, well, we'll talk about the, the story of, of the Fractal launch, but also the Fractal NFT launch, because that was sort of a surprising organic um, idea we had sort of spontaneously with the, with the community. And it was quite a ride to try to prepare the largest Solana NFT drop by a factor of 5x in just 10 days. So we're excited to, to share the story and um, to be joined by Ludovic, who um, who helped us pull it off. Yeah, Ludovic, we, you were recruited, you'd worked with Dave before, right? And then he recruited you to, to do this. And he tells me that you are an actual particle physicist. Yeah, well, to be, uh, to be fair, it's a physicist, so like theoretical physics. But yeah, my background is in physics. Uh, now I work as a data scientist. Yeah, Ludovic. Ludovic is the smartest guy I know, Justin. He's very, um, you know, he's very humble. <laughs> that's that's saying something. You're surrounded by eggheads at Google, weren't you? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Um, so tell Ludovic, tell me, you have some interesting crypto back stories, crypto background. Tell me, like, uh, how you got into crypto. Yeah, I got I got into uh, into crypto that uh, Dogecoin crave uh, where uh, people started creating all sorts of altcoins uh, that were not mineable led by ASICs, but mostly like, so uh, by late, like 13, uh, 2013, uh, one, of, one of my friend and I, we, uh, we built a rig and started mining and so on. And uh, we got really excited with even doing day trading, and that's all. Also, I lost all my crypto because the the exchange uh, where I was doing that pretty much closed down, and they ran off. Uh, so, uh, oh no! That was, that was like an early entrance in crypto and an early exit as well. <laughs> then I I focused more on my, uh, my PhD. Uh, you like wrote you you wrote crypto off for like years, right? Yeah, yeah, I didn't want. Uh, I heard about F, uh, Ethereum very early. I was like, yeah, smart contracts, pretty interesting stuff. But I still didn't want to invest because I was kind of a, I had a bit of a Kool-Aid hangover, let's say. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, that, that was kind of a, yeah, my, my story with, uh, with crypto. But like more recently with the more, like the recent project with the crypto economy, the tokens and not creating a hundred, but actually creating altcoins on, on the same chain as another crypto, um, that's very interesting. And instance is very interesting in terms of just the, 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 algorithm, the algorithmics that's behind it. The, the was one thing that convinced me that, yeah, crypto is cool again, and um, we, we should do something with that. So, so Ludovic had, uh, had told me just an interesting fact about Solana that as you approach the speed of light, the, the physical phenomena behind proof of history, which is this core underlying tech of the Solana blockchain stops working. Is this right, Ludovic? Right, right, right. Like I, I didn't prove that, but uh, I suspect that because it, because of uh, relativity, uh, 
things that are not casually get like in terms of of uh, causality that are not related together they might happen in any order and i'm not sure that the proof of history on solenoid is uh is causal and and so if you you were to put a computer uh in the sky uh, on a satellite and have it travel extremely fast i'm not I'm, I'm, i think you could actually try to attack the the network so uh, maybe in a in a thousand year we should uh, consider that <laughs> for solana we're gonna have to upgrade <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, all right, well, let's dive into fractals. So tell us about the collection, David, and like, how did we come up with it? Yeah. So our Discord was growing pretty quickly, and our community was asking for uh, for anything, a token and some type of drop. And so, of course, we're going to make our community happy. So we decided pretty quickly that we were going to drop something to them, an NFT specifically. And at first, we thought, this would just be a token of our appreciation for joining the community early, you know, um, no big deal. Pretty quickly after we realized we had a big opportunity. Um, the fractal community was being built from folks that were new to crypto, you know, from Justin's network, from Twitch. Uh, many of these uh, folks in our community are new to crypto, new to NFTs. And one of the futures that we're excited about at fractal is this this vision of a Web3 gaming world where you own your own assets. And one of the things that falls out from that is that you can use the same assets across different games. So if Ludovic owns uh, a special sword in game one, he could potentially take that out of game one, bring it to game two, and, and wield it there. And um, that is a really exciting uh, potential way in which Web3 games could could work. And so we we sort of, like realized that with this really awesome, engaged, diverse, inclusive community that we were building in our in our Discord, that we could actually drop an NFT that could show this potential, right? And so we thought to ourselves, why don't we build this, this primitive, if you will, um, uh, for power level, right? Uh, power is something that lots of games have. There's always a notion of you know, how much energy you have, right? And we thought to ourselves, it'd be really neat if we had this cross game power primitive. And similar to, you know, like the loot project on Ethereum, where, um, you know, a, a group just basically proposed a bag of words and led it up to the community to decide how to build on top of that bag of words, that if we put this asset out, the fractal NFT out to the community and left room for ambiguity around exactly what it could be used for, but sort of gave hints here and there, it would be really exciting and interesting to see where it goes. And, um, and it's been really exciting. I mean, it's only been a week or so since the collection dropped, but we're already seeing lots of, we're, we're having lots of interesting conversations around um, how games think about potentially adding the, um, you know, any utility into their, uh, into their game. Uh, or, I mean, you know, and it might not even be anything more than cosmetic, but still there's a lot of interesting behaviors we can potentially unlock with this collection. And um, it came together super quickly. Uh, we we're really pleased with how it, it landed. And um, we can't wait to see where we take it from here, you know? So one of the things is that it's interesting how it evolved over time for me because we started off as, like, like you said, it's like a token of appreciation. No pun intended. We were like, let's just drop something. We're going to make it the biggest airdrop. And I really thought it was like, okay, we're investing this all the Solana just to like for the lulls and we'll like distribute it to people. And I really, it's funny because I was, you know, the kind of the one originally trying to pitch, oh yeah, you'll use assets in one game and then they'll be usable in experiences in other games. But you were the one who like was like, hey, we had the opportunity to make this a possibility right now. And I remember like, you know, everyone was busy. We're trying to launch the site and we had 10 days until we were going to launch it. We agreed to launch it on Christmas Eve, which ultimately didn't happen. We, we delayed till New Year's, but you were like, let's spending all this time on the NFT and like on making, you know, trying to make it awesome and adding all these attributes and like making the rare, you know, dis distributed in a certain way with all the like attributes. And I was like, why are we 
I was thinking to myself, like, why are we spending all this time doing this? <laughs> um, this yeah, I mean, fun. I definitely felt that. Robin, <laughs> Robin, one of the co-founders um, of Fractal, I think had the same concerns. And um, um, thank you for trusting me, Justin and Robin. <laughs> yeah. So, so how did it, like, tell me about the process of, um, like, all the work that went into it behind the scenes. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, first of all, and we'll get into um, Ludovic's role in this, but we couldn't have done it without Ludovic. Um, he was he was really critical. And so, when you're thinking about d you know building an NFT project, um, I mean, the first step is you have to get the art right and generate the art to be and and like we could have pushed a placeholder, but that would have been lame, you know, if everyone's NFT looked exactly the same. And also, like our emote our official emoji for the community was a snowflake. Like it's a cliche to say that like all snowflakes are unique. Right. And so we're like, we got to figure out how to pull that off. Like every member of our community should get a unique snowflake. Like we have to do it. You know, we have to achieve it. We had 10 days. So, I mean, the first, the very first thing we did was we just needed to find the artist. Um, we got really lucky. Um, we didn't have any time to get it wrong, you know, um, I basically, uh, I found an artist out of Japan who had done similar work to what we sort of wanted to convey. And, um, and actually he was just about to, and by the way, we're going to do a, um, a medium blog post interview with him. He doesn't speak good English, but it, it'd be awesome to, to share his story, but he was just about to leave for the holiday break. Uh, it was, I mean, launching on Christmas is like the worst possible time to launch because basically, you know, people, it turns out people have like things to do. <laughs> so he, um, he was like, we just got so lucky because he was like, he was like, okay, yeah, I, 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 I'm leaving in like 36 hours. If you basically, if you hire me right now, I will just make it. And you know, he, actually, he actually had to render the assets, you know, um, so our, our plan was he, he builds the most amazing animations of these, of these you know, d digital snowflakes. And our plan was to just snapshot their, the progression and growth, right? And so he needed to actually spend, a, I mean, each one of the, the renders takes 12 to like 20 hours or something like that. And so he was like doing the math about how quickly he'll be able to do the work and spit out the renders so that he can give us the files before he goes on his like 12 day um, holiday trip, right? Where he's not gonna have his laptop or anything. I mean, we, we were, I, I was spending some late nights talking uh, on his time zone, trying to make sure we were gonna make it. It was very stressful, but we pulled it off. Um, well, at least the first step. But then there was like the rest of the project. Um, and this is where I, I would love Ludovic to tell his, his side of the story. So when you like when you create an NFT collection, you have to plan and you know the attributes, right? And you have to make sure that there's you know a good balance of all of the rare traits, and um, you want to make sure that the collection isn't dominated by a single trait. There's a lot of things that go into that, and so. Ludovic and I have worked together in, um, in other capacities with like huge data sets, analyzing data sets, trying to pull out signal from noise, understanding root trends. So like, you know, it was, it was obvious to me that Ludovic was going to be our guy to, to plan the, um, to plan the collection. And, um, yeah, Ludovic, why don't you tell us a bit about, you know, that part of it, right? Like you, um, you sort of like took it and and started and started sprinting toward the answer, and it was awesome to see it come together so quickly. And it'd be awesome to hear some of that story. Yeah, well, the the, the first part is we were we, we kept talking about that airdrop of snowflakes and the air, airdrop of snowflakes. So we had to design a bunch of attributes to give to each of those snowflakes. And the first thing that came to mind was this is a metaverse thing. And if we have a whole bunch of people in game wait, waiting for their airdrop, then the snowflakes would literally come like fall down the sky. Right. So, so that's how we, we started picturing the attributes. So like the, the, the snowflake is at a certain altitude and then it's falling down at a certain speed. And as it falls down, it spins on itself and it has a certain amount of power and 
And since it, it's it's a, a snowflake, and a snowflake is a crystal, a crystal is made of molecules, and those molecules can be very pure or not. So as the, the, the crystal grow, uh, you can have different level of purity. So we, we I started like imagining the distribution for all those quantities, and and also started uh, putting some uh, kind of an Easter egg quantity in there because as the as the snowflake fall down. You, you have a distribution of velocity for uh, all the snowflakes, and you have a, a few snowflakes that are over the speed of sound. And there is a and there is a, a known phenomenon. And if you've seen like military airplane in the sky, you've probably heard that when um, when a, a plane goes over the, the speed of sound, it makes what, what's called a sonic boom. So I, because of I, I won't rabbit hole on that, but basically as as the as the snowflake would fall down the sky, a, a, a supersonic snowflake would make a huge boom in the sky, and so everyone would know someone got a rare snowflake dropped down uh, from the sky. So that was kind of the. I, I don't. Idea. I don't even know the answer to this, and maybe maybe you don't want to share it. But how many snowflakes are supersonic? I can tell you that right now, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so while he's doing that, like the, the, we're not actually just like, we didn't just rand, you know, like each, each attribute, like pick a random number for it. Like we wanted to achieve certain distributions. Like, how do we think about, why is it so complicated? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> there's, there's a few things. Uh, okay. So now just to answer the question, there's a, a little bit over 2000 supersonic snowflakes, uh, over the hundred thousand. All right. Um, so, and people need to Google the speed of sound. I guess the velocities in meters is, uh, per second squared, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, all of this is in physicist unit. So, uh, purity is a pure number. Altitude is in meter. Um, the the spin is in degrees per second. Velocity meter per second and power. Well, then you, you figure it out because power is not exactly a, a, a physicist concept. It's in that not case. in. It's, it's not in kilojoules or something. Yeah, well, <laughs> from calories. the scales of zero to a hundred, where well, twenty to a hundred doesn't make quite as much sense. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, calories. It's sort of like a Snickers bar for a full powered fractal. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, we, so the the distribution. What's so complicated about it is try, trying to give. Uh, everyone a chance to get a very rare snowflake uh, and, uh, and and not make, so, so, so you have those, those four factions, right? And, and people that were very early get uh, snowflakes from the exit fa faction. And so since they're very early, we want to give a little bit of an edge. So on average, the, the, the exit snowflake is, has like higher attributes all uh, on each attribute. But as you go down, on average, each snowflake is a bit lower. But when you get in a tri-faction, there are 70,000 snowflakes there. And, and so you roll the dice like more often. And as a result, you get more extreme values that like in, in, in statistics, we call that the black swan effect. Like if you see yeah. a bunch of swan and if you see five swan, you'll never see a black swan. But if you see 100,000 swans, you might end up on, on one very rare black swan. And that's, that's one thing I tried to convey in the distribution here. So you, you get like very, very rare snowflake in the tri faction, even though it's the faction that is, um, that, that, that has a le the, the, the least of an edge, uh, basically. So what I, what I love is we had a community member, um, do an analysis of a subsample of like 3,600 fractals and they plotted out the uh you know the distribution across each faction and such and it was the first time i think the community realized that some of the not you know some of like the tries for example and i think the quad and the and the pentas as well have some really rare special fractals in there because for exactly that reason you you designed it with that in mind, because we don't want the collection to be dominated just by a single faction, because there's more to the collection than just the faction attributes, right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. And by and and that's one thing that uh, I spend so much time on is calibrating all the distributions such that when you look at like the probability to have a certain snowflake, that this 
like low probability snowflake could you could you could interpret as uh, the the rarest snowflakes, and we wanted to make sure it was not completely dominated by exaf action, and then uh, by quad and then penta then tri. We wanted like in every slice of rarity to have uh, a mix and match of all four factions, and so that that required a lot of work. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So one of the things we we were really interested in is like trying to figure out utility for this fractal, right? For the, uh, for this fractal collection. So what are some of the things that we're planning on doing, uh, on fractal itself, uh, in order to drive some value in the, in the fractal for the community? Yeah. I mean, to some extent, we're not a hundred percent sure yet. There's lots of really exciting ideas we have. Um, and some of which we'll, we'll talk about, but other things we haven't even thought of yet, right? So I don't want this to be considered like the de facto answer to that question, just to, just for the record. And I mean that because I think we're going to come up with even cooler ideas than what we might even talk about here. Um, so, I mean, you know, the fract fractal community, uh, owning a fractal should mean something within the fractal community, right? Uh, access to special events, which we actually have some on the calendar now. I'm not sure if, um, if we've announced them yet, but we're going to bring some special guests to the uh, Discord to have some awesome conversations with the community. And, um, you know, being able to bring folks on stage for live conversation uh, with, the, with the guests would be just like one example of some cool, cool stuff that I think, I, I think we can announce them, right? Like, we, uh, I mean, it's going to happen soon. Like we got, right. let's just do it. Fuck, we got we got <laughs> Gary V coming uh, for a special chat with our, to our fractal holders, uh, as well as Emmett, my Twitch co-founder, the CEO of Twitch. So uh, we'll d drop the date soon for when they're going to come. But if you're a fractal NFT holder, uh, you'll be able to get in that uh, chat and Discord and uh, ask questions uh, to those guests, and we're going to bring out more as well. Yeah. And then. The other thing we're, we're planning on doing is obviously there should be some benefit to holding fractal NFTs w with fractal itself, like with the marketplace itself. So, um, David, do you want to talk about some of the, the things that we've, we've talked about there? I'm not sure how specifically because we haven't really decided yet, but we have a yeah. bunch of ideas. Yeah, I mean, it might it might provide some benefit in some mints if um, if fractals are held by real people then it might actually be a really good anti-bot solution, right? Because there's a um, known community of folks that would uh, mint a project. And so maybe some of these games actually prefer to have the fractal NFT holders on the whitelist. So there might be something around just access. Um, I think there's probably going to be some type of, um, you know, some type of, uh, I'm not, I don't want to say discount, but definitely some, you know, maybe there's some economic incentive to participate. Maybe maybe fractals are airdropped to folks in the marketplace that are most active buying and selling on fractal. Um, you know, then this is where we're not exactly sure, but, you know, fractals are sort of a way to symbolize who's within our community, and we want to use it as a way to reward um, and incentivize the right behaviors within the community. And so, um, you know, so perhaps like your trading activity and all that stuff could actually unlock fractals for your wallet in the future. And tell us like, we've talked to some of our partner games, like people we've been, who are launching games, game studios that are building on blockchain about integrating with fractal. And, um, you know, tell us about like some of the ideas that they've had or ways that that fractal might make it appearance inside of games. Yeah, I mean, and this is where, you know, we, we try not to have opinions, right? Because we're, the, the, the balance of power and how these games work um, with respect to, you know, uh, the ability to have some skill to up-level versus the ability to pay to up-level, that's a very delicate balance. And so these games are all designed very intentionally and so we don't go into those conversations with much opinion other than the fact that we think that there's this really fantastic engaged community of gamers in the fractal community that would absolutely love uh, to see the fractal make an appearance, right? So I think there's sort of like two types of integrations that we're going to see. Um, the first is purely cosmetic. You know, maybe Ludovic has uh, a hexa 
fractal. And so his, his tank in Panzer Dogs glows, you know, yellow. And by the way, I'm just using that as an arbitrary example, not um, to make any commitments on behalf of Panzer Dogs here. But like, everyone who's, you know, battling Ludovic in, in his tank is like, holy shit, look at that thing. It's like glowing in the dark, right? And like, that, that would potentially have no benefit from like in the game and like wouldn't make his weapons more powerful but it would just be freaking cool and everyone would know that that guy was you know that guy Ludovic was in the um the Hexa faction um then there's like there's other games and I don't want to be too specific but there's other games that have these like charms and trinkets that you can pick up along your journey and it's possible that the fractals are um related to that somehow right and um we're, we're, you know, I'm sure that folks who have spent some time thinking about fractals and maybe have, have bought some already have seen on our website that we have said from the very beginning that fractals are subject to change slightly over time. And this is really important to us because we feel like there is so much potential, like most NFT collections are static, right? That's what you think of, you think of immutability the inability for uh, for folks to edit when you think of an NFT. But I think we're at the very early stages of what an NFT means and could be. And I think we've only collectively scratched the surface on like the cool things that they unlock. And like, I think gaming is going to be one of those sandboxes of like of innovation where like there's going to be all sorts of really fantastic things, but one of the things that is required for the, some of that innovation is the mute ability, the ability to, for the things to change. So imagine if your power level actually adjusted based on gameplay, and imagine if like you could, um, you know, you could go into one game and perform super well, unlock some some special benefits because you're just like such a rock star player in that, in game one and then actually power up your fractal as a result of that play. So maybe you actually have to stake your fractal into the game. You know, you do your thing, you, you win your matches, and now you've powered up. You could take it to the marketplace and sell it if you like, which, and it might be worth more than what you paid. You can go and use it in game number two and now like unlock a new level because you're at a certain power level. Now, do we know for sure whether this is you know, this vision's going to come to reality? No, I don't think so. But we definitely think that there is a huge potential for these types of interactions across game. And we wanted to be the, uh, you know, a company that actually helped bring that future forward because it's a really powerful vision. And it's one where if it works, it can work in a, like such an a incredible way and change the perception around what games and Web3 could mean. Yeah, it's um, it's a pretty powerful vision, and I feel like a lot of game companies already have been reached out, and they want to partner and bring the frac you know some experience to fractal holders, um, you know already. So I'm I'm pretty excited about that. And hopefully, you know, and hopefully over the the coming weeks and and months, we're going to have some really fantastic specifics to share with with all of you guys, um, and the the game developers, you know, to some extent, they don't even need the fractal team, right? They it's, these, are, these are assets that you own. They're in your wallet on a public blockchain. And, um, and games can recognize that however they choose. And that's part of the exciting part of the composability of Web3 is one of the most exciting aspects of it. I feel like that was a pretty great overview. David, Ludovic, thank you so much for, for joining. Yeah, it's good to chat with you, Justin. Thanks for having us on.